Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Right now at noon, remembering Officer Lauren Kortz, a Detroit police officer, a husband, a father, killed in the line of duty by a man with an assault-style weapon. His wife tells us he wasn't even supposed to be on the job last night, but he volunteered to work a double shift. It is a shooting that has rocked the community and the Detroit Police Department. This afternoon, we are getting a new look at what led up to this deadly encounter on Detroit's west side. It ended Officer Court's life and the man who shot him. A live report in a moment. In an hour, we are expecting to learn more about the situation from Detroit Police Chief James White. This is a live look at the Detroit Public Safety Headquarters with the chief, where he will be giving his remarks shortly. A husband, a father, a best friend, a dedicated police officer, and that's the way Officer Lauren Court's wife wants her husband remembered. Today, Christine Courts talked with Local 4, telling us more about her beloved husband. The two were married for more than a decade and have a 15-year-old son and a 9-year-old daughter. She told our Nick Monticelli, quote, he was very, very loyal to DPD. It was his passion. She went on to say he loved being a police officer, but he also loved being a dad. He would tell you that was his greatest accomplishment, being a dad. In a Facebook post, Coates also wrote more. It reads, I'm broken. I can't begin to imagine how we are going to live without him. My babies need him. I need him. I keep thinking I'm going to wake up from this nightmare and he's going to come home. Christine Quartz tells us that her husband was likely shot right as he got out of the patrol car and police are telling her that he did not suffer. This afternoon, we are getting to see more about what happened at the corner of Joy Road in Marlow, where this occurred in the city's west side. Rod Maloney picks up the story from there. And Rod, I understand that you have new surveillance video from the scene. Yes, there were surveillance cameras here in the area. We also want to show you that the memorials have now started. This set of balloons and a teddy bear put at the corner of Joy and Marlowe for the police officer just put here by one of the neighbors here. Very sad that the Detroit Police Department is in fact missing one of its officers died in the line of duty last night. Now we can show you the video cameras. It's surveillance video, but we also want to tell you that we have uh, audio broadcastify audio from DPD as its officers were speaking to each other on the air last night. Officer down, Joy and Marlowe, Joy and Marlowe. An auto repair shop at the corner had its cameras rolling as the first officers arrived, and you can see one with his weapon drawn in front of the white building there. And then an unmarked Detroit police scout car backs up into frame. We need everybody now. As other officers arrive, they start moving toward the intersection of Joy and Marlowe, the report of a man indiscriminately firing an AK-47. And as you will see here, the danger of that gunman obvious, as at least a dozen police officers turn heel and start running in the opposite direction looking for cover. Takes a while, but then the officers as a group cautiously begin moving toward the gunfire in the scene. The cameras don't show the interaction between Officer Courts and the gunman, so we are uncertain still where they met and how the shooting happened. A second camera view shows the immediate police response as the call went out for police backup, and it came in droves. Shot and immediately transported to the hospital was Officer Lauren Courts, who recently received a citation for an arrest he made in a murder investigation. Detroit Police Chief James White last night was at once furious and heartbroken over Court's death. Entirely too much gun violence in the city, too much gun violence in this country, and now we've got an officer who has paid the ultimate sacrifice, putting his life on the line for you and me, you and me, every single day. Uh, and officers are doing it right now, even after this call. Enough is enough. Now, we have been throughout the neighborhood here talking to the neighbors. Very few people, if any, actually saw what occurred here. But what they do tell us is that they heard what they thought were fireworks last night, and then the police converged on the area and essentially shut the place down, telling people to go into their homes to uh, stay away from what could be further violence. And so we're going to look to get more information about specifically what happened at that press conference at 1 o'clock. And uh, we're also in the process of working to speak to other family members of uh, officer courts uh, to see if we can get better information there. So for now, we're reporting live from Joy and Marlowe in Detroit. Rod Maloney. Lowell.
and four. All right, Rod, thanks for that update. And I can't say it enough. Our hearts and our prayers are with the court's family and also the Detroit Police Department as they mourn this terrible loss. A short time ago, Governor Whitmer shared her thoughts on yesterday's tragedy during an event in Troy. I know that the department and the city of Detroit um, are wrapping their arms around the family and I will be reaching out to the family as well. But, I, you know, this is just a, a proliferation of, of guns and um, gun violence. And I think that the work we're doing to invest in more officers and to keep communities safer is more important than ever, but um, it is, it's really sad. It, this is a person who served his community and um, risked life, life every single day, but showed up every single day. Um, and that's why we got to give our law enforcement officers support, training, resources, so that they can show up and keep us all safe. And we will be following this tragedy throughout the day. Again, Detroit Police Chief James White is expected to give an update on this shooting at 1 o'clock today. You can watch it live right here on Local 4. Also on our streaming channel, Local 4 Plus, and click on Detroit.com. We'll be talking to people who knew Officer Coates courts and we'll have more on the news at four, five and six. Plus right now you can read more from Nick Monticelli's conversation with Officer Court's wife Christine. That's on the home page of clickondetroit.com and how brave and powerful of her to share at a moment like this. In other news this noon, Republican candidate for Michigan Governor Ryan Kelly pleads not guilty to federal charges for the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol in Washington. He appeared virtually for his arraignment facing four misdemeanor charges. According to FBI documents, footage shows that Kelly is on the steps of the Capitol and entering the courtyard. Kelly appeared last night at the primary debate in Grand Rapids. A big shakeup in the UK. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is stepping down after three years in office. Johnson made his announcement in front of his uh, official residence at 10 Downing Street this morning. The resignation comes after a series of high profile cabinet resignations and multiple calls for Johnson to step down, including from members, some of those members of his own Conservative Party. I know that there will be many people who are relieved and uh, perhaps quite a few who will also be disappointed. And I want you to know how sad I am to be giving up the best job in the world. But them's the breaks. Johnson says the timetable for a new election will be announced next week and that he will continue to serve until the new leader is in place. Now we're going to turn our attention to the weather and the sun shining outside Brandon as we take a live look at downtown Mount Clemens. What's ahead for us for the rest of the day? Probably the best bit of news that we have for you in this noon newscast is our wonderful weather here. The seventh day of the seventh month and we are right on target for exactly where we should be here early July. Low middle 70s with 80 degrees city airport 78 over at Metro 77 Pontiac. We have 77 Monroe 73 Harrow Ontario. Just a couple of wispy high clouds out there. There is a little humidity so we'll feel it out there if we're out uh, playing games, maybe doing a little yard work. Looks like low to middle 80s today. We are tracking a little wet weather for our finally Friday coming up. Thank you, Brandon. An autopsy is scheduled today for a 10 year old, a 10 year old boy who died after falling from a play structure at Camp Dearborn. State police say that the boy was playing on a floating structure in the middle of the main lake when he fell in Milford Township last night. The boy was unresponsive when police arrived. Milford firefighters took him to a nearby hospital, but that is where he later died. We'll have more on this in later editions of Local 4. Now to a Local 4 News update where we are getting a first look at the woman accused of running over a landscaper and pinning him to a house in Southfield. Tiffany Hart pleaded not guilty to assault charges. It happened on Tuesday afternoon on Hilton Street near 10 Mile. Prosecutors say three workers were weed whacking when Hart allegedly hit one of the workers with her car. We're told that the 32 year old victim is recovering from a fractured pelvis. Still to come, WNBA star Brittany Griner pleads guilty in a Russian courtroom as the family of Novi's Paul Whelan 
takes issue with the U.S. response to her detainment. We're back with that story and more in a moment.